so we're just going to talk through three mistakes that I often find students making in their writing and three top tips to try and avoid that happening. So the first mistake that I often find that students make is that they don't use quotes in their writing, they don't use evidence to back up their responses. And this is probably because they have the evidence in their brain, so they're just writing and then they forget to put it down. Um, but this is really important because both for marks and also just to strengthen your argument, it's really important to have the quotes in uh, um, and it's a key skill of writing. Um, so I often think that a good, I think that a good top tip would be to, as you're reading through, if it's an extract or a poem or whatever it is, as you're reading through, highlight the things which are interesting to you. I think a highlighter is a really useful tool, something so simple, but as you go through, highlight the quotes which are interesting to you, because as you read through, there will be things which are automatically interesting to you, which you're drawn to, and those are the things you will probably write about. So if you just highlight them, then as you're writing your answer, you can refer back to it, it's probably above your answer, you can refer back to it really easily and just highlight um, and then you can just tick off what you've highlighted to show that you've put it in your answer. So I think something as simple as a highlighter could be really useful for making sure you include your quotes because you have them right in front of you and it's very obvious. Um, a second top tip, uh, sorry, a second mistake that I often find that students make is sometimes in a structural analysis question we they might tend to use language analysis as part of their evidence for their answer rather than structure. And this might be because really structure can is a lot can be a lot more difficult and it's a, sometimes it can be a little bit less obvious and because the most natural thing for us to do because it's what we do most of the time is to analyze with language was probably more comfortable with the techniques however of course in a structural question you have to use structure in your answer and um, so i think a top tip for that would be to one revise your structural techniques and make some revision cards with the structural techniques on so you can recall them more actively and then when you go into an exam or if you're practicing an exam question, on the top of your paper where your extract is, just jot down a few structural techniques, okay? Just jot them down so then you have a little box so then you know what you're looking for a little bit more. It's never good to read blind, okay? It's always good to have something in your mind um, as you're reading through so you can know what you're looking out for because I think if you're looking out for language, you'll probably find it. Um, but for structure, you might need that the prompts there for it to be a little bit more obvious. Um, so yeah, I think revise your techniques, have a bank of them in your head, you could have them in revision cards to get them into your head, and then jot them down in the exam, just, it takes 30 seconds to write them down so you have them there to refer back to so you know what you're focusing on. And a third thing that I often find that students, uh, mistakes students make is that they don't plan. Partly because the time pressure is so big in the exams, there's not enough time to do anything, anything or it doesn't feel like there's enough time to do anything, I should say, sorry. Um, students won't plan, they'll just go straight into the answer and panic and then they won't write something that's very coherent, the argument might not, might not be very clear or the description might not be very clear. So um, a mistake that students make is not planning and I think this is so, planning is so important, it literally will say in the exam paper, it will tell you to plan, students that plan will always have a more um, structured, succinct argument and a more well thought out argument. Um, so a top tip to always plan, I would say is just get a load of past papers, get a load of past papers and exam questions and practice planning them. It's a really quick, useful revision um, tactic. You'll have a load of questions and because in an exam you should only spend, spend about five minutes planning maximum on a longer question, on a short question, just one minute, just really quick, read through your extract, write down a little plan of ideas. Um, so what I would say is a great revision tool is to get those questions and go through and just plan them. It's a lot quicker than going through and answering them. Um, so it can be a lot more um, relaxed and a lot less stressful way because you don't have the time pressure of doing the whole question. Um, but you can get all your ideas down, you practice planning and then it becomes a habit. And so then in the exam, you're way more likely to plan. Um, so those are my three mistakes that students often make and three top tips to help combat them. I really hope they helped.